Noctua's NHD15 was the go-to industry standard for the best air cooler for the last decade. But maybe it's time for a change. This is the newest attempt of kicking the NHD15 off the throne. Meet Gambias Game... Game Diaz, Gam Diaz, I, 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 am ho I hope that I'm pronouncing this correctly. This is Gam Diaz and their Boreas P1720, a dual tower cooler featuring a 140mm fan in the center, a 120mm in the front and seven freaking heat pipes. That's one more than the D15. Let's hope for the best. Gamdias P1 comes inside a relatively standard package containing the heatsink, two fans, fan clips, some installation hardware for AMD and Intel, a screwdriver and some thermal paste accompanied by a spreader. Standing on the table, this little behemoth is actually a relatively small behemoth. At only 158mm height, it is actually quite a lot smaller than the NHD15. Granted, the fan on the D15 pushes that amount up quite significantly, but overall, we are still looking at about 10mm less than the D15. The fan in the front is a regular 120mm fan, spinning at up to 1750 RPM, whilst pushing up to 68 CFM at 1.65mm of H2O. The one in the center is a bit weird. It looks like a 140mm fan, but it's actually quite a lot more like a 135mm fan, with its top and bottom border being significantly bigger and taking away the square shape. Well, it's still a 2000 RPM fan at 84 CFM and 1.91 mm of H2O. Instead of providing you with a splitter to daisy chain these together, Game Diaz made sure that the front fan already has a splitter at the end of its cable, which is nice. The main eye candy of this thing will still be the heatsink after all. The seven 6mm thick heat pipes are traveling up the two heatsinks and ending underneath these two matte black covers, one of which has a Game Diaz logo on top of it. Overall, the Boreas P1 is definitely something for the all-black builders. Black coated pipes, black heatsink, black fans, no color whatsoever, no RGB. No matter where you look, if all black with an accent of silver is what you are looking for, this might tick quite some boxes. As far as compatibility is concerned, the P1 can be mounted on pretty much every consumer AMD CPU, including the newest AM5. And over on Intel, we are looking at the newest LGA 1700, followed by everything used within the last 10 years, including LGA 2011-3 and 2066. As for RAM, dual tower dual fan thick boys never have it easy. By default, the right fan will protrude over the RAM slots. And below that one, we are looking at roughly 35mm high sticks before we start hitting the fan. To solve this issue, we got two solutions. Either move the fan upwards, making the overall cooler higher by the amount you are pushing it up, or mount it to the back, assuming that the heatsink allows for it, which takes away the problem basically completely. Of course, if the VRM heatsink allows it. And at this point, let's also quickly go over the installation. For an Intel chip, we got to use the provided backplate and position it behind the motherboard after adjusting the corners to your socket. On the other side, we need to slap on the spacers, blue for LGA 1700 and black for everything else. These are followed by some retention brackets with the short side pointing towards the CPU and then screw everything down. Over on AMD it's a bit less. Remove the pre-installed retention brackets, slap on the spacers followed by the retention brackets with the curve pointed towards the CPU and then screw everything down. From here, slap on the heatsink, screw it down and add both fans. Okay, now let's finally have a look at how a 7 heat pipe cooler performs. Using this poor thing, we have three scenarios. A 120W low workload, a mid to high workload at 250W and a god tier at 320W. To get our numbers, we switch between the different modes in BIOS with pretty much every imaginable setting locked down. Then we hit the CPU and wait for about 15 minutes until the cooler reach what it can do over a very permanent time span. 
and then we gradually lower the fan speed in 10% steps and we note down the CPU package temperature average over 2 minutes, deduct the air temperature in front of the fan to get the temperature above ambient at any given fan speed. For the noise, we position the cooler on this table with a dB meter at exactly 1 meter distance on its own tripod, then again the fan at 100%, we write down the dB, we lower the fan speed in 10% steps and we write it down at any given fan speed. Let's begin with the low workload. At 120 watts going through the socket, the Boreas P1720 managed to keep the CPU at 34.2 degrees C above ambient. This positions it just in front of the Arctic Freezer 50, but it does position it slightly behind the NHD15 and even the Nokia NHU12A. Quite the surprise to me. But the surprises continue, because on the noise to performance graph, we can see that although the Boreas managed to keep the CPU relatively cool, it did so at quite the noise level. The second highest after the Iceberg Thermal Icelead X7 Dual, a boy which was really freaking loud. However, something to note here is that the Boreas P1 gets quieter dramatically quick once the RPMs are going down. It immediately starts wrestling with the Arctic Freezer 50 and for the last 30% it definitely becomes the better player. However, compared to a Nokia NHD15, it's just a different thing. From start to finish, the Boreas P1 was hopelessly defeated. But let's bump up the heat. Maybe 120 watts just weren't enough to make 7 heat pipes shine. At 250 watts going through the thing, the image didn't really change. At 66.8 degrees C above ambient, the P1 is still behind both the Nokia NHU12A and D15. The only upside is that compared to things like the Freezer 50, the distance starts to become bigger and bigger. And hey, it beat the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240 ARGB, that, that's something nice. On the noise to performance side, it looks quite interesting. Compared to the Freezer 50, the Game Diaz P1 is definitely the better choice. And compared to the Icelead X7, we actually got the same crossover we did before where the X7 was better at high speed, but at a certain point the Boreas just takes over. But again, compared to the NHD15, it's, it's kind of hopeless. Something else interesting to note here, the Dark Rock Pro 4 is actually present here, but Excel doesn't like to draw a line, so I had to add it in post, due to it managing to keep the CPU below 100 degrees C at exactly 100% PVM, yeah, it, it's just a dot. At this point, we usually would go up to 320 watts, but no air cooler has survived that yet. So let's just skip that blank list. So where do we stand? It's, it's not the Nokia NHD15 killer, at least not on, uh, on top of R3900K. It's close, it, it definitely is. And at 250 watts, it actually whoops all of the direct touch coolers asses. So it's really not bad. The problem with its performance overall is due to the fans. They are just too damn loud, at least compared to the NHD15. As far as the lowest CPU temperature goes, the NHD15, U12A, the, the Boreas P1 are all within a margin of error. It's not a problem of temperature, but the two fans used on here are just too goddamn loud and they are pushing the graph so high that the NHD15 flat out wins every battle. Something that got me quite sad was that we didn't see like a 15% a bump in performance. After all, it's one heat pipe more than the NHD15 and yeah sure, the heatsink is a bit smaller, both of these blocks are about 10 millimeters shorter and all, but I was still hoping to see like some actual performance improvement over the decade-old NHD15. On the other hand, there are also clear advantages for going for a Game Diaz P1 instead of a NHD15. First off, the RAM clearance is just flat out better. 35mm is more than 32 on the NHD15. And if you need to push the fan up anyway, you will always have a cooler that's at least 10mm smaller than a D15. And at 158mm by default, 
that's really not that bad for the average mid-tower case. And it's all black by default, not brown and a bit less brown. But the most important difference will be the price. I can get one of these for the very iconic price point of 69 euros, which is not far from half what a not eye-burning Chromex Black and HD15 would cost me. So for me, this is kind of the budget version of the NHD15. It performs close, costs half as much, but it does come with the annoying side effect of being very loud in comparison. It is still a lot better than the Arctic Freezer 50, but it is loud. Anyway, I think this should be it for Game Diaz. I really hope I pronounce this correct. Game Diaz and the newest Boreas P1720 air cooler. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel memberships. So if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to investigate why the heck everybody is jumping on that 720 trend that Deepcool started. What the hell is this number? A 6 fan 120mm based radiator? Stop, stop that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Geometric Future Eskimo Junior Neon 36. It is not a junior at all. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.